The American black bear is North America's smallest and most widely distributed bear. It has an estimated population of around 850,000 individuals, and this trumps the brown bear population at around 200,000 individuals. This may be more impressive than you first might think, as brown bears are found across large areas of the northern hemisphere, whereas black bears are only found in North America. Black bears are not closely related to brown bears or polar bears, as genetic studies have revealed that they split from a common ancestor around 5 million years ago. Because the black bear is much smaller than the other North American species, it chooses to avoid them, and if it's unlucky, it can fall victim to them. As the black bear has such a large population over such a large area, it has quite a few subspecies across its range. Each of these populations are adapted to a different way of life, and they have evolved unique adaptations to help them to survive. In today's video, I will be focusing on the most distinctive black bear subspecies, and to start off with, we will be heading over to British Columbia. The spirit bear is one of the most beautiful and iconic mammals in Canada, and it's loved by many across its range. When most people think of the spirit bear or the Komodi bear, they think of the white individuals. But white bears only make up around 10-20% to of the population. It's only one of a few mammals with colour morphs, with one of the other great examples being the jaguar. Only around 10% of jaguars are black, so there's a higher chance of a spirit bear being white than there is a jaguar being black. The white individuals can give birth to black coloured young, and the black individuals can give birth to white coloured young. The spirit bear is an important part of the First Nations culture and spirituality, and they are considered sacred animals. For hundreds of years, they have been known as ghost bears or spirit bears, and this is how the subspecies got its name. These bears are found in the central and north coast regions of British Columbia, and it's the official animal of the province. Because they are found on the western coast of Canada, they do have to look out for predators, and one of their natural enemies is the brown bear. Brown bears will actively hunt spirit bears and their young, but thankfully they do have some useful tactics to avoid them. Black bears are excellent climbers, and they will shoot up into the trees to escape from predators. Like all other black bear subspecies, the spirit bear is omnivorous and mostly feeds on plant matter, but it will also target deer and salmon. This diet allows them to reach pretty impressive sizes, as males can weigh as much as 225 kilograms, whereas females are much smaller. Surprisingly, the white colour of some of the spirit bears gives them an advantage when it comes to hunting certain animals. White spirit bears are 35% more successful at hunting salmon in the day than black spirit bears, and it's believed that this is because the white bears are much harder for the fish to spot from under the water. The lighter colour gives the bears a clear advantage, but not all bears are a fan of this colour. Strangely, the colour of the spirit bears also affects who they choose to mate with, as white spirit bears are much more likely to mate with other white spirit bears, and black spirit bears are much more likely to breed with other black spirit bears. This phenomenon is known as positive assortative mating, and it's believed that this happens because the young bears imprint on their mother's fur colour. Fortunately, the hunting of the white bears is illegal due to their rarity and because of their cultural significance, but they are still at risk from poaching. If you do want to see one of these bears with your own eyes, there are a few lodges in the area that provide bear sightseeing opportunities. And if you're lucky enough to spot one, then I'm sure you won't forget it. The Queen Charlotte Islands black bear is the largest subspecies of black bear, and it's native to the Haida Gwaii archipelago. Unlike many of the other black bear subspecies that have a few different colour morphs, this bear has only been seen with black fur. As this subspecies is found on an archipelago, it does eat a lot more marine creatures than its mainland relatives. It feeds in the intertidal zones for mollusks and crustaceans, and of course in certain times of the year, it will also feed on salmon. To help them deal with hard-shelled prey, they have evolved larger skulls and molars than their mainland counterparts, but a large part of their diet is still made up of plant matter. The Queen Charlotte Islands bear is considered a keystone species because they distribute salmon remains into the forests while feeding, and they are the largest predators on the archipelago. This bear can reach a maximum weight of around 315 kilograms, and they are more muscular than other black bears. It's believed that they can get so large because they have very little competition, as they are the only bear species on the archipelago. 
Queen Charlotte Island's black bears are also known as Haida Gwaii black bears, and they are known as Tan in the dialect of the indigenous Haida people. The bears are very important to the Haida people, and they feature predominantly in their culture and mythology. This bear's size and its hunting behaviours mean that it's one of the most distinctive black bears, and there's another North American mammal with a similar story. Just like the Queen Charlotte Islands bear, the Vancouver coastal sea wolf has also evolved to hunt marine animals, and they are both found in the same part of the world. Both of these animals started off feeding on land animals but switched to marine life and it seems to suit them very well. Unfortunately, since the 1970s, at least 900 of these bears were killed by hunters and this was extremely reckless as their exact population is unknown. Because the hunting was wasteful and because it went against the Haida ethics, it was eventually banned, and hopefully they will be able to thrive in the future without any human interference. The glacier bear is endemic to Alaska and British Columbia and it's known for its strange coloration. When it comes to black bear coloration, most people are aware of the white and brown colorations, but few people know about the blue bears. The glacier bear is also known as the blue bear and that's because it has a silver blue color to its fur. The Tlingit people are the indigenous people in the areas in which these bears are found, and their name for these bears, Sik Noon, means a bear that disappears. This name is a reference to their size, their elusiveness, and their ability to blend into snowfields. The glacier bear can be found across quite a few habitats and areas as it's found in the Glacier Bay National Park and the Tongass National Forest. Glacier bears are similar to most other black bear subspecies, but they do seem to eat a lot more plant matter than other bears. The exact scientific reason behind this bear's coloration is unknown, but as their clinket name suggests, it could help them blend in with snowy or rocky areas. Because these bears are so elusive, they can be very difficult to find in the wild, but as they are so beautiful, I'm sure it's worth trying. The cinnamon bear is one of the most well-known subspecies of black bear and it's native to both the United States and Canada. As you might be able to guess, this bear got its name due to its reddish-brown coloration, but even the colour of this subspecies can differ greatly. Because the cinnamon bear has a brown coat, it's often confused with brown bears, but there are a few ways to tell them apart. The best way to tell these two bears apart is by their size, but there are other physical features that are also great clues. Some experts believe that their coats are brown to mimic brown bears, but others believe that their brown fur helps them to better blend in with their environment. If you happen to see a brown black bear in the wild, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a cinnamon bear. Some other black bear subspecies can be brown, and the likeliness of a black bear being brown can vary from state to state. The vast majority of the cinnamon bear's diet is made up of plant matter, and they are most active at dawn and dusk. Like other black bears, they have keen senses, with their sense of smell being their strongest. Their sense of smell is believed to be the best of any land mammal, but they don't only rely on their noses. Their eyesight is very good close up, but it's believed that they can only see forms from around 90 meters away. Unfortunately, in recent years, black bears have faced an increased rate of poaching, and this is due to demand from Asian markets. Parts of the bears are used in traditional Chinese medicine, and the fact that they have a distinctive coat makes them even more valuable. Hopefully there's more of a crackdown in the future, as the cinnamon bear is a beautifully unique subspecies. The Florida black bear can be found in Florida as well as parts of Georgia, Alabama and Mississippi, but it once had a much larger range. The Florida black bear's numbers have decreased in recent years, mainly due to increased human development across its range. This subspecies is mostly seen with a shiny black coat and around 30% of the population have a white chest patch called a blaze. The Florida black bear is the state's second largest mammal after the American bison and it can reach weights of over 300 kilograms. Like with all black bears, the females are much smaller and female Florida black bears weigh about half as much as the males. These bears are mostly shy and reclusive, and thankfully when it comes to bears, black bears are relatively peaceful animals. I say relatively because all bears have the potential to kill a human, and even though black bears do claim the lives of humans, attacks aren't as frequent as you might think. 
Since the year 2020, there have been eight fatal black bear attacks on humans in North America. And over the same time period, there have been 11 fatal brown bear attacks on humans. As I've already covered, there are far more black bears than brown bears in North America, and the black bears are found over a much larger area. None of these fatal attacks were carried out by Florida black bears, and usually the more aggressive black bears are the ones that live alongside brown bears. Animals that live in more competitive ecosystems are usually more aggressive, and to live alongside brown bears you have to be pretty tough. Bears that are with cubs or bears that are defending food are particularly dangerous, and this is why many attacks happen on hunting and camping trips. The Florida black bear's diet mostly consists of plant matter with the rest being made up of insects and other animals. As this bear has very few natural predators across its range, their main threat comes in the form of humans. Poaching does have a small effect on their numbers, but road collisions are their main problem. Vehicle bear collisions are the top cause of death for Florida black bears, and since 2012, over 230 bears have been killed across Florida. Because of this, many animal underpasses have been put in place, but bears aren't the only animals to use them. The Florida black bear has become increasingly important in recent years, and this is because of the state of the ecosystem. It's no secret that Florida has an invasive species problem, and native predators play a very important role in controlling them. Without these bears, the situation would be a lot worse, and they really do a great job at defending Florida. American black bears play a very important role in the North American ecosystem and they are often underappreciated. Even though I've been through quite a few interesting bears in today's video, I've only really scratched the surface. There are a total of 16 subspecies of black bear across North America and each of these bears is beautiful in their own way. If you think there are any other subspecies that I should have included, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.